Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the economic order quantity or the EOQ. What is it? It is a model commonly used to establish optimal inventory levels. It is used to manage inventory. So this is an inventory management tool that is used to get just the correct inventory levels that a company needs to have. In other words, it is the optimum order quantity that a company should hold in its inventory given a set cost of production, demand rate, and other variables. This is done to minimize variable inventory costs. So the EOQ is calculated for the ultimate purpose of minimizing variable inventory costs. So let's look at this graph here which explains a bit better uh, where the EOQ lies. Graphically, the equation can be presented as follows. As the holding cost goes up, the holding cost of inventory that is, the cost of ordering the inventory goes down. You can see in this graph here, this line over here represents the cost of holding the inventory. If it goes up, the cost of ordering the inventory goes down, as you can see with this line over here. And the reason for that is that is because when we hold more inventory in stock, that means we have ordered more. And the more inventory we order, the less the cost of ordering becomes. But it only goes to a certain point. And we want that point where it intersects. And that is what the EOQ aims to calculate here, over here where they intersect. And this is where the EOQ would lie, or the economic order quantity would lie. So, how do we calculate economic order quantity? As you can see from the formula over here, the EOQ is calculated as the square root of 2 times F times S divided by C times P. And this is a very simple formula which, if you remember, it will help you in calculating EOQ in any question. So what does F stand for? Well, 2 is the number 2 times F. F stands for the fixed cost of placing and receiving an order, which would be a figure that would be given to you whenever you have to calculate EOQ. And S stands for the annual sales in units. And it's also very important when you're calculating the EOQ to bear in mind when are you using annual and when are you using weekly or whatever the case may be. So remember, the S stands for the annual sales in units. So that is what you need to bear in mind. And then it's divided by C. What is C? C is the carrying costs expressed as a percentage of inventory value. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a carrying cost expressed as a percentage of inventory value. Whatever that inventory value is, you take the carrying cost, divide by the inventory value to get that percentage. And then you multiply that by P. What is P? P is the purchase price per unit. The purchase price per unit. So these are figures that you'll most likely be given. You may have to calculate some of them, like the annual sales in units. You may not be given. You may be given weekly sales, and you'll have to multiply that, say, by 52 weeks to get the annual sales. Or you may you may not be given the percentage, and you'll have to calculate the percentage. So that is how you go ahead with the EOQ uh, formula. But we'll do an example right now, which will help you understand it better. And here are two other formulas that... Uh, is commonly used whenever you have to calculate EOQ or whenever you have to do an example where you may be asked to calculate the total carrying costs. This is one of the formulas. Q is the quantity that you have in stock at a specific period. It could be weekly or it could be bi-weekly. You'll be given in the example. So if they say at the beginning of each week we hold 100 inventory in stock, that is that will be your Q and you divide that by 2 and you multiply that by the carrying costs per unit which you should be given as well. So whenever you ask to calculate the total carrying costs, this is the formula that you will use. And then down here we have total restocking costs. How do you calculate total restocking costs? Well, if you're asked to do that, you take F, which is the fixed cost per order, and you multiply that by the, the total uh, quantity that you have annually. So remember that as well. This is the total inventory or the total quantity that you have per annum. And then you divide that by the quantity that you have at the given period. That could be weekly or bi-weekly or whatever the case may be in the question. So they can say the quantity is 100 per week, 100 units per week. So that is where the Q comes in. You'll put the 100 where the Q is. And the T, like I said, is the annual quantity in unit. So let's go ahead and look at this example. Here we are told that Jesse Limited is a manufacturer of milk bottles and the following information is obtained from their records. And we are given the annual sales which amounts to 500,000 units and the purchase price per unit is 3 rand. The carrying cost of inventory is equal to 20% of the purchase price of goods. The ordering cost is 100 rand per, per order 
and we have four days which are required for delivery. We are given four days as the required delivery days. And then the desired safety stock for the firm is 4,000 units, very important. So what is the requirement? We are asked to calculate the economic order quantity for Jesse Limited. And the second question is to determine the reorder point for Jesse Limited. And we have to assume a 360 day per year. So let's start with the first one. How do we calculate the economic order quantity? Well, let's remind ourselves of the formula. There we have it on the bottom left. It's 2 times F times S divided by C times P. So let's begin with the formula. It's the square root 2 times F. What is F? We are told here that F is the fixed cost of placing and receiving an order. And here we are told that the ordering cost is 100 rand per order. So we're going to put 100 rand over there. So 100 rand multiplied by S. What is S? S is the annual sales in units. Now, in some questions or in your question, you may not be given the annual sales in un un units. Like I said, you may be given the weekly sales and you'll have to multiply that by 52. Or you may be given the monthly sales, you multiply that by 12. But here we are given the annual sales in units, it's 500,000 units. So we put 500,000 over there. And then we divide by C, what is C? C is the carrying cost expressed as a percentage of inventory value. Now here we are given that actual percentage. You may not be given, you may have to calculate the percentage with the formula that uh, I gave you just previously. So we put 20% or 0.2. And you multiply that by P. What is P? The purchase price per unit. And here we're told it's 3 Rand. And that's why we have 3 over there. And we are done with that formula. So you plug it into your calculator. And you calculate it. And remember the economic order quantity is in units. The answer will be in units. So we have 12,909.95. So we round that up to the nearest number. So we have 12,910. And that is the economic order quantity that we were asked to calculate so that would be the actual unit that we need to have in stock to have the optimal inventory level or it would be just the correct inventory that we need to have in stock this means that if we had anything over 12,910 our cost of holding inventory will be higher or if we had anything less than 12,910 our cost of placing the order will be higher and that is why we need the optimal inventory level and we have just calculated it it's 12,910 so we've just completed the economic order quantity calculation now 2.2 or the second question says determine the reorder point for jesse limited and we assume a 360 day a year so let's do that what is the requirement we have to calculate the actual reorder point and what is the reorder point the reorder levels in units is the safety stock plus the reorder point so there is the reorder levels in units that we need to calculate so we'll take the reorder point plus the safety stock. Well, we are already given the safety stock, which is 4,000 units. We are told that the desired safety stock for the firm is 4,000 units. So we already have that, but we don't have the reorder point. So how do we calculate the reorder point? Well, we take the waiting time multiplied by the daily average usage. So the waiting time multiplied by the daily average usage. Remember, we are, tele we are, we are calculating the reorder point here. So we already have the waiting time. We're told here that four days are required for delivery. So that is the waiting time that we are looking for. Whenever you're calculating the reorder point, you're taking the waiting time times the daily average usage. So we are told that the, daily, uh, the waiting time is four days. So we already have four days, but we don't have the daily average usage. How will we calculate the daily average usage? Well, we're going to take the 500,000 units per annum divide by 360 days remember that's why we're told to assume that, that we, we that the, the days per year is 360 you may be told 365 so that's what you'll plug in there so 500,000 units divide by 360 days per year gives us 1,388.89 and we round it up to the nearest number it's 1,389 units so that is the daily average usage of inventory so now we can get the reorder point remember we said it's the waiting time as it's written here multiplied by the daily average usage so let's do that reorder point is 4 which is the waiting time which we were given over here 
multiplied one 1000 by 1389 which is the daily average usage we get a reorder point of 5556 now to get to the reorder levels in unit because how much do we need to reorder in units remember we have to have safety stock and that's why we have this formula safety stock plus reorder point now that we have reorder point of 5556 and we have the safety stock of 4000 we can get the reorder levels in units so how much do we need to order each time well it's 4000 which is the safety stock that we need to have or the firm needs to have that is their desired uh, amount plus the reorder point like the formula says above here 5,556 uh, 5, gives us a total of 9,556 units. I hope that has made sense. We had to calculate first the reorder point. So when we calculated the reorder point is how much we need to order at a specific period, but the company desires to have safety stock in units, uh, safety stock uh, in, 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 in their premises of 4,000. So every time we order, we have to order the 4,000 plus the reorder point uh, um, units of 5,556. And we have reorder levels in units of 9,556. That means at each point when we make an order, we'll be making an order of 9,556 units. I hope that has helped and it has made sense. If you have any questions or any queries, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you have learned something from this lesson or you have gained any value from this lesson, please leave it in the comment section below as well. And subs consider subscribing to our channel and sharing our videos, liking our videos if you can. Till next time. Cheers.